Social security is defined as any government system that provides monetary assistance to people with an inadequate or no income. In the U.S., it is a federal insurance program that provides benefits to the retired. Social security has been a staple in our society since 1935 when President FDR signed the Social Security Act. It supplemented retirement and for many it was the entirety of their retirement plan. Social Security started amid the Great Depression. This was a time in which gas cost 19 cents a gallon and a house averaged at $6,300 a year. Although inflation exists, the cost of living at this time was tremendously cheaper as compared to 2014. The average life expectancy in 1935 was 63.3 years old and it has grown to average 78.74 years. The average life expectancy for people now versus 1935 is 15 years longer. This causes the government to have to pay retirees for on average 10 years longer than they did 70 years ago. At this rate, by the time year 2037 comes around, the average life expectancy will have continued to rise, causing Social Security funds to run out. There has been consideration of changing the system of Social Security to privatization because of the fear of Social Security running dry. Social Security pr privatization can be defined as diverting money out of government control and into the citizens' and businesses' hands. Social Security is insurance. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee for old age. It's a guarantee for disability. It's a guarantee if you die and you leave minor children. This is the only guarantee you've got. There used to be a okay. game show called You're You Bet Your Life. You're they saying didn't it's take a guarantee. You're saying it's a guarantee. But hey, David, most people my generation are pretty convinced that there's no chance that that quote guarantee is going to be there for them. Isn't that part of the frustration here? Well, that's right. The market is eventually going to force the privatization of Social Security because of demographic change. The fact that 90% of payroll receipts are uh, paid out immediately to recipients, we just don't have the cash flow to sustain this, uh, this program. Um. Conservatives are for privatizing Social Security. They believe it can speed up the growth of the economy, make room for tax cuts, and will allow people to pay for their own benefits as opposed to collectively paying for each other's. With the privatization of Social Security, each person proportionally receives what they put in. Liberals are against privatizing Social Security and want to keep funds in government control. There are many reasons liberals are against privatization and some include the large cost of over $1 trillion to transition systems, the negative impact that privatization would have on the disabled, and the risk of allowing stockbrokers to take advantage of the uninformed general public. We think the long-term benefits of privatizing Social Security outweigh the immense costs. Privatization would give people the option to grant assets to family and friends upon death. When Social Security is privatized, the private Social Security firms would be regulated and only allow individuals to invest in approved mutual funds and diminishing the risk of stockbrokers taking advantage of innocent citizens. We support privatization of Social Security. For one, when Social Security was established, 17 workers paid for the benefits of one retiree. At this rate, the estimated ratio in 2035 will drop to 2.1 workers per one retiree, allowing individuals to contribute to their own private accounts may reduce future loss of money from fewer worker contributions. Also, the privatization of Social Security will allow for tax cuts or to use those taxes in another form of public assistance. On top of that, privatizing Social Security would boost economic growth by having this money be in stocks and bonds. Privatization gave citizens the freedom to choose how and where their retirement funds should be kept. And finally, this will guarantee for future retirees that they will have a retirement fund even after 2037. When as important as it is, cutting spending and bureaucracy alone are not going to be enough. 
In their current form, we're going to have to recognize that Social Security and Medicare are unsustainable, not for the current group of retirees, but for coming generations. And we can't afford to avoid these entitlement challenges any longer. Medical reforms. Under my plan, no one near retirement age or currently retired will see any of the changes I'm going to describe. But people in their 20s and 30s and 40s and early 50s are going to see some changes. And by the way, tax hikes, they're off the table. We'll We're going to slowly and gradually raise the retirement age for Social Security. And we'll slow the growth rate in benefits for higher income retirees. And then when it comes to Medicare, tomorrow's seniors should have the freedom to choose between traditional Medicare and a range of private plans.